I forgot to say, we forgot to say the, the Shamus blessing, right? <laughs> but then decided instead of being bitter and angry, what he was going to do was to start a seminary where everybody can learn about each other and get along with each other and have interfaith understanding. So, you know, definitely um, an inspiration for all of us. So what is it about this, the, the idea of this Kabbalistic thing? It's going a little deeper into things, right? Into it, the, the, if each letter means something. It's not just the word, it's every letter into it. You have that in the Hebrew language, you have that in a lot of the ancient languages. It's always about going deeper because words, words don't satisfy. Words are very limited in our lives, right? And everybody gets confused with words. So I love my husband, he goes, but that word means, and he gets out the dictionary, <laughs> this is what it's supposed to mean, you know? And I'm like, yeah, but we haven't used it for that, like that in like 50 years. <laughs> Everybody uses it for this, but that's not what it means. And he's right, he's right, that's not what it means. So what do we mean? You know, we, we don't know, we don't, we don't understand each other. So in this, in our menorah lighting, right, one of the, Letters was a view, right, for understanding, right? We wanted to know. We want, we want to understand more. And that's the idea when we take a spiritual journey. We go deeper to try to have a, a better understanding, right? A better understanding of something that is deeper, deeper in the everydayness of life. Because the everydayness of life is good, right? We're, we're very blessed here. You cannot say we're not blessed. Look at this beautiful church. You know, we're all fed. We all have clothes on our back. You know, clean water. These are not available to a lot of people living on our planet today. Today, they don't get it. Don't get clean, clean water. They don't get it. Right? Seventy percent. 70% 70 70 of the people living on our planet do not get clean water. So we are blessed, amen? Amen. We are blessed, amen? Amen. 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 Right? This amen. is something where I'm talking about that, oh, you got to oh, it. I'm telling you, you really got to get that in there. Get some enthusiasm and get some reality check of what we're doing in life and what this is going to be. So we get caught up in the everydayness of life and we get caught up on, do I have a nice man? Does it look pretty? What do the decorations look like? What does the outside look like? Am I wearing my blue? Am I getting it all together? And what about the inner stuff? What is the real meaning of the holiday? What is the real work that's being asked of us every time these holidays come around? Yes, they are a celebration, but there is an inner meaning that goes deeper. You know, Reverend Lucille talked about freedom, right? Taking freedoms for granted is another thing that goes on. You know, the idea of like taking it for granted that we can come into a fellowship here and everybody can believe something different, and you do, but we all embrace each other and love each other and support each other and what our beliefs are. Because at the core of it, we want these elements of compassion and understanding and humor and kindness and happiness. We want these deeper things, not only for ourselves, but for each other. 
and able to say thank you for this gift and to celebrate a holiday like this that reminds us, reminds us of this capacity to have this. But it doesn't just come because somebody got up and, and said, you know, I, it's my right, right? Because that's what, that's what the reading, Zacharias says, ah, uh -uh, you don't get it if you just say it's your right. You don't get it because you deserve it. You don't get it because you're entitled to it. You get it because of the divine. You get it because that there is, we all talk about that thing, right? I'm a spiritual being having a human experience. I think we get a little flippant about that statement. That is a profound statement. I am a spiritual being. The deeper meaning of the menorah is going back to the light and the truth of who you are. And yeah, a lot of times we think it has to be done a certain way. And, you know, we always think we can't handle it and there won't be enough. Or what the divine has given me isn't enough. Or God, you don't understand this situation. You know, this one is like, or oh, the guilt. The guilt, I don't deserve. I'm not enough. But what the menorah reminds us of is that that inner light lasts. Even when we think we got to do something different. Even though we think we got to get... You know, get it fixed right or do something else to it. That light still burns. The divine is constantly saying, I'm with you. I'm still with you. No matter what. No matter what. And that's the message in there, not by might or by right, but by my spirit. And the celebrations are always asking us to go a little deeper into that connection, have a little more enthusiasm for that, the power of that existence of the truth of who we are. I am that spiritual being having a human experience. So where does my energy come from? Where does my life come from? It comes from the truth of who I am and making that connection. Okay? There is something that, uh, it was something that Deepak Chopra was saying about, and he was saying about, I, I, I wrote this down because this was really cool. Wait. Okay, how, do you, how does a person measure, right? Measure, we want to measure. How am I doing with my spirituality? How am I doing with the things that are going? How am I doing in my life, really? How am I doing in living a spiritual person, right? In my human existence, right? So he says we measure it. Do you, and the, the way you think measure, you ask yourself this question. Okay, so on a scale of one to ten, because this is it. The question is, do you have enough, enough energy to do everything you want to do? Do you have enough energy to do everything you want to do? If I'm a spiritual being, right, my energy should come from? Your spirit. The divine. divine. Right, right? If I'm a spiritual being, my energy should come from? God. God. Divine. <laughs> Spirituality, the energy, that the energy cannot be created and destroyed. We're constantly there. This energy is holding up the planet. This energy is spinning other planets. This energy is, is creating stars. This energy is profound. It is powerful. It is real. It is in you. It is in me. It is something that, that guides us, sustains us. It's phenomenal, right? So I gotta <laughs> get some enthusiasm, right? You gotta get some enthusiasm. You gotta move, move that blockage out of there to get back to this place. So we look on this. He says, on a scale of one to ten, how much energy do you have to do the things you want to do in a day? The things that you really want to do in the day. Do I really want to make a connection to the divine? Oh, I got that. I got that. No matter what goes on that day, I can make that connection. We do a nine on that, right? Can we? Do we? Where's where's our where's our barometer going here with this? Think about it. What are we doing? What are we plugged into? Choice. That's what the Course of Miracles says is the real miracle. The choice of the plug. You can plug in to the mundane. You can plug in to the externals. You can plug in to the ex 
expectations and what it should look like and what we got to do and all the other stuff and the heaviness and all the, that human experience it's going to be very human and going to be very tough and it's going to be there's a lot of requirements to be in human you got to eat you got to breathe you got to move up body, you got to be in this. There's a lot of requirements to that, but there's a lot of fun in that too. There's a lot of things you can do, yeah, but don't lose your soul. Don't lose your spirituality. So the numbers come back in, and he says, if you can get an either a 10 to an 8, then you are thriving. You are thriving in your spirituality. You know what's important to you, and you can do it, and you can connect to it. Thriving. You get a seven to five, you're struggling. And then a four to zero, you're suffering. Suffering. It's optional. It's optional, exactly. Suffering is optional. The Buddha had said that. The Maccabees said it was optional. Right, it was optional that we just let it happen instead of bless you, instead of taking up the work of standing in truth. Because that's what they did. They stood in truth. And the greatest fight that we have to be in to stay there is within ourselves. But this holiday is a reminder that joy comes, the light prevails, that even if it takes you eight days to get out of your own head, <laughs> you can still get out of it and the light will be there for you and it waits. It waits, it waits, it waits. Light waits, energy is there because that is the truth. Thank God that is the truth and it prevails beyond all the rest of it. So, my challenge for you this Hanukkah is to get more of that back in your life. You're not going to forget this. <laughs> that was my point. You're not going to forget it because it's going to remind you. Get it out. Turn it over. Let it go. Because the light prevails. Don't let the light go out. It's your choice. And so it is. And so it is.